Hey, Tim Frisch with a Frisch Perspective here. Today I wanted to continue to talk about Bible translation. Recently I uh, compared the English Standard Version with the New American Standard Bible and uh, just showed the good sides of both translations and I got a lot of good feedback on those videos uh, and I asked people if there were other translations that, I, that they wanted me to compare and a lot of people gave suggestions for other translations to look at. So thank you so much for those of you who gave feedback. I look forward to continuing to talk about different translations and how they compare to each other. Today I want to talk about something that I think is, is really interesting. It's just an observation that I made. Um, and it has to do with the New International Version and the English Standard Version. Uh, and then another version that I think actually really relates to those two. When I think about the New International Version, uh, really what I think about it is that it is the number one evangelical translation. Now, I know that a lot of people like other translations and, and people are very gung-ho about other translations, but when it comes down to it, the most popular or the high, most highly sold translation in the evangelical Christian world uh, is the New International Version. It's, it's used very widely and has been for many years. It's been around since the late 70s, early 80s. So the way I look at it is the New International Version is kind of the, the top version. Obviously the King James is, is still in use to a great degree, but I'm just talking about overall the trend has been toward the New International Version and it is the number one selling translation from the charts that I've looked at. Uh, so then you have all these other translations that are, that are also new and very good translations and some of them are very popular among evangelicals like the English Standard Version and the New American Standard Bible and uh, the Christian Standard Bible, the New King James Version, among others. So when you look at all of these, the way I see the picture is that the NIV is kind of the number one translation and then these other translations are really vying for second in many ways. But the one that's really given the NIV probably the most run for its money is the English Standard Version. Uh, and so that's interesting and I think there are reasons for that. I mean the ESV came on the scene in 2001 and its translation philosophy was uh, very appealing to some people, more of a literal translation than the New International Version. Not that the New International Version is uh, loose or extremely paraphrastic. In other words, it's not paraphrased a lot. It's a very accurate translation, but it is more thought for thought and the English Standard Version is more literal. So the timing of the English Standard Version, the philosophy of the English Standard Version translation it just pulled a lot of people in and of course the marketing of the English Standard Version like the New International Version was done so well. Uh, so NIV is Zondervan, ESV, English Standard Version is Crossway. Two great companies and so they have really built their market share in the Bible world. I was just reading a little booklet put out by a pastor, some of you may know, uh, Kevin DeYoung, and he was talking about why his church switched from the NIV to the ESV. Uh, and this was written in 2011, and I think they made the switch some years before that in the 2000s. And uh, it really followed his own journey because he had grown up using the New International Version and then he himself switched to the ESV and eventually the church he was pastoring switched to the ESV as well. He gives reasons, uh, seven reasons in this little booklet why they switched to the ESV. And to kind of summarize what he's saying there, he's basically saying that the, the NIV uh, isn't as literal for his tastes and purposes as the ESV is. He really wants a much more literal translation. And uh, so that kind of summarizes what he's saying. And he gives various reasons why that is better for him and for his teaching ministry. Uh, so in looking at that though, I really was already thinking about this, that you have people who use the NIV, you have people who use the ESV, and uh, Kevin DeYoung is representative of people that even used to use the NIV who now use the ESV. But you got these two groups, and wouldn't it be great if we had a translation that could somehow bring it all together better? Because you've got the NIV in the number one spot, 
in the ESV kind of competing and really kind of winning right now that number two slot. So what would be a translation that could maybe possibly pull these groups together and become much more of a unifying translation among evangelicals? And uh, the translation to me that would do that would be the Christian Standard Bible. So I want to look at why I think the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB, uh, really has that potential ability to bring together those who like the New International Version and those who like the English Standard Version. And I'm going to give a few reasons here. The first is that the CSB is like the NIV in its natural English. So one of the things about the ESV compared to the NIV is that people will say, well, the NIV reads more the way that we speak in English. The ESV sounds more awkward at times. The CSB has more of that natural flow to it that you get in the NIV. So I think that would pull NIV people in. Now let me give you an example of this. Comparing these three translations, if you look in Matthew chapter 5, verse 2, on the left we have the English Standard Version in the middle, the Christian Standard Bible, and on the right the New International Version. And uh, this is the English Standard Version. It says, He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and then in the Christian Standard Bible, he began to teach them, saying, and in the New International Version, he began to teach them. So you get the idea there that the English Standard Version is being literal there. It does say he opened his mouth and taught them, but why does it say it that way in English? I mean, we never say that. We don't say, uh, I was talking to my father and he opened his mouth and said, <laughs> right? You know, you just, you say he said, right? And so the expression there in the original language is, is the idea that he began to say this. So, yeah, I understand that the English Standard Version is trying to be literal, but you can see why the Christian Standard Bible and the New International Version worded things the way that they did there. And so I would say the Christian Standard Bible, that's just an example, reads more like the way that we talk in our normal English. So it has that advantage along with the New International Version. But on the other side of the coin, the CSB is more like the ESV in its concern, its deep concern to try to be literal as much as possible. While the CSB isn't quite as rigid, I would say, as the ESV, it's still quite a literal tr translation. If you look at charts, actually, you'll notice that the uh, the ESV is really on that literal side. The NIV is more in the thought-for-thought thought category. Again, not extreme, but it is more thought-for-thought. Thought. And then the CSB is in between. And their translation philosophy, uh, according to their committee, is optimal equivalence, I think is what they call it. So the CSB was trying to say, we do, uh, we do want to be literal, but we're willing to be flexible. And so uh, here's some examples of, of where you can see how the CSB is kind of in between the ESV and the NIV in terms of literal and thought for thought. In 2 Corinthians 5.14, the English Standard Version says, For the love of Christ controls us. In the Christian Standard Bible, for the love of Christ compels us. And then in the New International Version, for Christ's love compels us. So as some people have pointed out, the phrase there in the original language reads more like you see in the ESV in the Christian Standard Bible, the love of Christ, which could be talking about our love for Christ or Christ's love itself. What you see in the NIV there is really kind of an interpretation to say, okay, the translators think it's talking about Christ's love, whereas the CSB is more literal like the ESV and it kind of leaves it ambiguous there. Another example is James 2.12. The English Standard Version says, So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. The Christian Standard Bible says, Speak and act as those who are to be judged by the law of freedom. And then the New International Version says, Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. So again, you see more of the literal side where it's just using the word of in the English Standard Version, in the Christian Standard Bible. And then the New International Version has more of a interpretive way of translating that and talking about the law that gives freedom rather than just the law of freedom.
Now, I'm not saying that's a totally bad thing that the new international version is doing, but I am saying that you can see how the CSB in these examples is more literal like the ESV. Now, let's look at another example in 1 Thessalonians 1.3. The English Standard Version says, Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian Standard Bible says, We recall in the presence of our God and Father your work produced by faith and your labor motivated by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the New International Version says, We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. You have in the original language there, again, phrases that tend to use the word of. And in the English Standard Version, you just get the literal rendering there. Here, the Christian Standard Bible didn't feel that the text itself was really ambiguous. It just felt like, okay, it does actually mean these things. And so the best way to put that in English would be to actually fill out what the word of means. So it's a little bit more flexible like the NIV here. It's not quite as literal as the ESV. So I think when you put all these examples together, you can see that the Christian Standard Bible, if it's ambiguous in the original text, does try to be literal, but if possible, it tries to word things in a way that we would speak in English, in a way that's understandable to us as English readers. So kind of a balance between the English Standard Version approach and the NIV approach. Another thing about the CSB that I think really could draw in NIV and ESV people is that it has very similar formatting to these other two translations. It doesn't use italics for supplied words in English. It doesn't use capital pronouns for deity. And so when you look at the CSB, it looks a lot like what you're reading when you read the ESV or the NIV. So it's not like a huge formatting change going from one translation to the other. And I think people that are used to the NIV would be very comfortable picking up a CSB and say, yeah, this, this seems a lot like what I read in the NIV. But I also think people who read the ESV would, would say the same thing. They'd pick up a CSB and say, wow, this, this looks a lot like what I'm used to in the ESV. And then another thing that I would point out is that the CSB is really between the English Standard Version and the NIV in terms of how they deal with issues like gender and even technical language. So let me give you some examples here about this. So an example concerning gender uh, would be Romans 12.1. In the English Standard Version, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. And it does have a footnote here next to brothers or brothers and sisters. In the Christian Standard Bible, it just puts brothers and sisters in the text there. And that's the same with the New International Version, brothers and sisters. Now let's go over to James chapter 3, verse 1. In the English Standard Version, it says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers. And in the Christian Standard Bible, it also says, not many should become teachers, my brothers. Now, it does have a footnote here that says brothers and sisters, but in the text, uh, the CSB is saying that this is referring to men as teachers in the church. The NIV says, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers. So you see how the Christian Standard Bible is really kind of in between the English Standard Version and the NIV there in terms of gender. On one hand, it is willing to go with brothers and sisters if it's clearly talking about men and women, whereas the English Standard Version stays very literal in the text and it just uses the word brothers even though Paul is talking to men and women. But in James 3.1, where it's very likely talking about men, teachers, uh, the NIV really stays away from that, isn't literal, and goes with my fellow believers, whereas the Christian Standard Bible in that case is willing to go with what the English Standard Version says and says brothers. So that's how the Christian Standard Bible deals with an issue like gender from what I've seen. Uh, now, the other thing would be technical language. So let's look at an example of uh, how they compare to each other in that way. So one example here, 1 John 2.2, 2, the English Standard Version says, He is the propitiation for our sins. 
And the Christian Standard Bible says he himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. It does have a footnote that says, or the propitiation. The New International Version says he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So you see the Christian Standard Bible uses a phrase, atoning sacrifice, that's like the NIV, but in the footnote it puts the word propitiation to clarify what that atoning sacrifice does. In other words, it, it is a propitiation. It appeases God's wrath against us. But the word propitiation is a technical word that a lot of people don't really understand today. And so the English Standard Version using the word propitiation is technically correct, although the idea there uh, of atoning sacrifice is also true. So the CSB kind of gets right between the NIV and the ESV and says atoning sacrifice and puts a footnote saying propitiation. So it doesn't always use all the technical language, although I would say it uses more technical language probably than the NIV, but not so much technical language as you have in the ESV. So in just looking at some of these examples, and I could give others, but you get the idea, the CSB could really appeal to people both in the NIV group as well as the ESV camp. And I think that uh, it's a great translation for many reasons, but one reason being that it could pull Christians together. Uh, now, will it do that? Uh, I think there are some major hurdles for that to happen. And so I just want to talk about that a little bit here. The first obstacle uh, would be that, you know, you have people that have used the NIV and the ESV for years. I mean, the NIV has been around for decades. And now even the ESV has been around for a couple of decades, and they have really built a uh, trust with their readers and the people who use the NIV, as well as people have just gotten used to these translations. So there's a real affinity for these translations that people have developed. So it's hard for people to switch. If they really love the English Standard Version, it's hard for them to switch to something like the CSB. And maybe they don't have that trust level there that they have with the translation they already use, and the same with people who use the NIV. So you have that obstacle, it's just people have used the NIV and the ESV for years. Another obstacle, of course, is just the marketing competition there. Uh, again, the NIV has been marketed so well by Zondervan for decades, the ESV being marketed by Crossway, and they both have put out amazing editions uh, of their translation for years, so people just love what is available to them. And Holman, who puts out the Christian Standard Bible, has to compete with these other top-notch marketing groups. Now, I will say, Holman is also really good at marketing themselves, so if anybody can uh, give them some good competition, it is Holman, but still, it is a challenge. Uh, you have just great companies that are uh, putting these translations out there. That's one of the reasons these translations have done so well is because they are so good at marketing. And then one other reason I'll give for why it is hard for the CSB to really make inroads and kind of become the unifying translation is because people do fit into one category or another for a reason. So I've been talking about how the NIV is more thought for thought and the ESV is more literal and really beyond what people say is their reason for, for uh, going with a certain translation, there, there are other reasons, other factors that, uh, that play into it and, and some factors that they may not even be fully aware of. So there are reasons why people like these different translations already and, uh, and that's why we have people in these different camps. But I will say this, that the King James Version, when it was produced, was actually produced during a time when you had different camps within the Church of England. And so you had more of the establishment and the people that were the theologians and the, uh, the bishops and people like that. But you also had people who were zealous and wanted to reform the church and make it as biblical as possible, Puritans. And so the King James Version was actually a version that was able to bring these two groups together. Now, one of the advantages is, from what I know, that these two groups actually had the opportunity to work on the King James translation. The CSB, while in theory, could bring different groups together, I'm not really sure that these different groups have participated in the creation of the 
Christian Standard Bible, and so that might still be an obstacle. But I do think that that historical precedent of the King James Version shows that a translation can bring different people from different groups together. And personally, I would love to see a translation that does actually become the standard translation for Christians of different groups. There was a fellow Christian who recently wrote why he would say the Christian Standard Bible is his standard Bible. And uh, he's actually from England, so I thought that was pretty cool. Here's a guy who's not from America and doesn't really uh, know a whole lot about Holman or the uh, Southern Baptist Church that Holman is tied in with. Um, and yet he would say, just objectively speaking, he thinks that the Christian Standard Bible is, uh, is, a, is a Bible that really resonates with him and, uh, and he thinks is, is a great standard Bible. So that's a lot of food for thought, but basically I was just thinking about this already and uh, just contemplating how the CSB kind of fits that niche right between the NIV and the ESV. And I was just reading Kevin DeYoung and why his church switched from the NIV to the ESV. And uh, it just kind of reinforced this thought that, again, the NIV top translation has been best-selling for a long time now. The ESV is really vying for that second place spot in evangelicalism, but you still have a divide there between NIV and ESV. Is there a translation that could bring it all together and give us a standard Bible for Christians? And uh, I would say that is the Christian Standard Bible. Thank you so much for listening to my thoughts and opinions brought to you from a first perspective.